isn't gonna just blow over. The Zerg won't stop until we're all dead. Vengeance shall be mine. The seven evils are one within me. I am Legion. Stay a while and listen. To ask why we fight is to ask why leaves fall. You are not prepared. Warcraft players, where are you at? Starcraft players, where are you at? The Oculus players, where are you at? Tonight we sit down and talk Diablo with four of the lead developers from Blizzard Entertainment. Welcome to Blizz Pro's Twizcast. Disturbing hallucination. Welcome to Twizcast, everyone. I am your host, Twiz, and uh, this is usually the part where I tell you all about my Brewmaster Monk, uh, or the recent StarCraft II battle that I got absolutely destroyed in, but uh, tonight we will be talking about demon hunters, witch doctors, barbarians, wizards, and much, much more, but I am not alone. Monks, too. Okay, and monks. All right, fair enough. I'll let you in on that. <laughs> uh, but I am not this alone this evening, as you can tell. Uh, please help me welcome back to the show someone who is no stranger at all uh, in interacting with BlizzPro. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Jimmy Bloxham. Hello, sir. Salute. Hey, what's up? what's up? What is up, everybody? I'm excited for tonight because um, being able to hear from the Diablo developers is always something really cool to, to do. Oh, so I'm really excited. I'm, I'm ready. Let's get into this, man. That's what I'm screaming. That's what I'm... Now, before I start introducing the main players in tonight's discussion, I'd like to let everyone know that the download of this episode will be available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and the RSS feed can be subscribed to at Twizcast and BlizzPro.com. So... Everybody, let's go ahead and dive right into this, shall we? Uh, as you know, I have the four lead developers uh, on the line with me, so let's take a minute or two uh, to make some introductions. The first introduction that I'd like to make is game designer Travis Day. Hello, sir. Hi, how you doing? Very well. It's good to have you on the show. Uh, the next man, myth, and legend we have is senior technical game designer Wyatt Chang. Hello, sir. Hi, glad to be here. Very good to have you as well. The man that is, I hope he's back. We started the show and he wasn't even here. We'll find out the hard way if he's here or not. Uh, the man that is handling the upcoming Xbox and PlayStation Diablo release is also with us. Please help me welcome to the show Jason Bender. I hope you're here. He's not here yet, so I will say hi. Oh, it was so Jason. close. Jason right. says hi. Jason says hi. All right. Well, the man that you just heard from, and I am all very honored to have, uh, have him on the show here, is the newly appointed game director, Josh Mascara. Very happy to have you here with us, sir. Oh, thank you for having us. I think it's uh, really awesome to uh, talk to you and and the rest of your listeners, and you know, spend an hour talking about all things Diablo related. Awesome! I like the sounds of it already. So, uh, gentlemen, because we have a lot of people on the line and a lot of ground to cover, uh, we are going to attack this in sections. So, Josh, if you don't mind, sir, uh, I'd like to start with you. Uh, I have to ask you. You uh, about a month ago, you picked up the uh, the new job. How's it working for you? Uh, you know, it's it's gonna be some very cliche, but it's uh, you know, uh, I thought just making games for a living was a dream come true, but uh, you know, getting you know you know spending, you know, getting to spend some time with uh, the Diablo three team and especially some of the guys in this room, it's 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 super awesome. Um, and we have a very passionate, uh, super talented team, and uh, you know, I've worked in some really sort of great studios and great companies, but. There's nothing like working in a in an office full of hardcore gamers, oh. and uh, the awesome conversations we have on a day-to-day -day basis is 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 pretty cool. So I have to pitch myself uh, on on a routine basis, saying like, yes, I'm, I I get to work uh, at on Diablo 3, which is awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's one of those things you could talk about it all day long, but it just doesn't probably do any justice to what it's really like. So that's true. Um, so I got to ask, since you took the position, uh, was there anything that, that you had to take on that was kind of a much bigger undertaking than what you had in anticipated? You know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was, you know, having seen, you know, the, you know, the final, you know, push for, for D3 and, you know, getting to, to work with Jay and seeing those guys. And I think the, the thing I was aware of, but I didn't really um, sort of understand until sort of I stepped into into the role, is just the 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 expectations that you know not only the you, know, you guys out there uh, are are players, but also the expectations that we have internally um, for the game. Um, it's you know it it does keep you up at night, and um, 
but again, it's just it's just such a privilege to be able to, um, you know, being able to talk to you know, guys like Wyatt and Travis and and just sort of work with them and and really sort of figure out how we're going to sort of take this awesome awesome game and and sort of march it forward into the future. That's uh, that's awesome. And you know what, you've got. Uh, I'll just tell you up front. Um, it wasn't until recently that I jumped back into Diablo myself, and um, I'm not trying to sound like a fanboy or you know or anything like that. But I'm very impressed, and uh, I'm very I'm very angry with myself that I put the game down for so long and didn't pick it back up uh, sooner than I had. So um, you know it, you've got an amazing product going for you, and so I'm really glad that uh, that everything is working out well for you. So I had a really simple question for you, hopefully simple. What's an average day of you can, for you consist of? I mean, you're having to deal with the entire team. You're overseeing the entire project. What, take us through a day of Josh. Take you through a day of Josh. Um, well, I wish it sounded, it was, I, I wish it was more exciting than, uh, than what it really is. But, you know, I, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, I spend a lot of my time, um, in in meetings with with the you know various people on on our team, um, and a lot of them might not sound very exciting, but you know when you're when each of those meetings uh, you're you know we're dealing with some some very interesting topics that you know unfortunately we really can't get into at this at this moment, but you know we're we're trying to solve some 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 pretty hairy problems, but you know we're also trying to come up with some really cool ideas and some interesting things that we can really take you know Diablo forward, and I think for me um, you know. What does a typical day look like? Um, you know, it really boils down to you know spending the time with the team, listening to the the great ideas uh, that they have, and just really trying to uh, focus people around what the core fantasy of of Diablo is, and making sure that we're we're keeping the so what I call the three core ideas in mind, and the fact that you know Diablo is up with these epic heroes that are they're bigger than life, and they have all these awesome awesome powers and then you know they're fighting the horrors of hell and making sure we're coming up with really awesome monsters and you know the boss fights but at the end of the day it's it's all about the loot and you know just being able to be in conversations and sort of have an idea of what the future has in store uh it's it's really cool so i think the you know bulk of my day spent you know having really cool discussions uh you know, some of those meetings involved, you know, playing the game and so having discussions about a particular feature. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then, you know, part of the game, uh, you know, some of my days, I, I think the more fun days are when I get to do things like this podcast and, you know, get to talk to you guys and, and our community because I think it's really important that we, um, you know, we listen uh, and that we, 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 we hear what you guys have to say because, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's really important that, that um, you know, we get, you know, what makes a great game is great feedback, and, sure. and there's no better uh, people to give us great feedback than our great players. Oh, and, and I'll tell you what, this, uh, this is chock full. I had uh, just short of about 500 questions submitted for this one hour long interview, and um, you know, it's some of the, the thoughts and stuff like that that's going on with the community right now, it, get ready, because <laughs> we, uh, we've got some for you. So, um, now you have been uh, you've been overseeing the development of the upcoming console release of the game, right? Are, how how excited are you about this? Oh, uh, I thought I mean, so when I started Blizzard, I was hired specifically to you know take on the you know the daunting task of translating what is a a beloved you know PC classic and making it feel native on the console. And you know it wasn't a done deal from from day one. In fact, the the challenge was can we even make this work and and not just make it work, but can we make it a sort of worthwhile, um, you know, addition to the Blizzard family? And I think one of the great things, um, especially over the last year, where we really got to focus on the console version is, is you know, just working with, you know, the, the console team and the PC team. And everybody was really open to, uh, you know, some of the crazy ideas that, that, that we, were, we were coming up with. And everybody was really excited that, you know, we didn't just want a port. Like, we really wanted to, you know, find a console way of expressing, you know, that magic that is, that is Diablo, that is about your heroes going mm -hmm. through these, you know, mm -hmm. randomly generated dungeons, killing monsters, looting their corpses. So, um, and I think one of the sort of really cool things has been, you know, when we've gone to PAX and E3, um, just the reaction that we get from players, uh, both, you know, long-term, uh, long-time Diablo players, and even, like, first-time Diablo players who've heard about Diablo but have never actually played it. And um, they've been... 
um, their feedback has been phenomenal. And, and there's, there's just something magical about being able to play a game like, like Diablo on a big screen, on your couch with, with a controller. So yeah. it's, it's, been a, it's been a really fun ride. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I mean, I remember back in the day, the Gauntlet Legend days, you know, and I loved that game. And, um, you know, I picked up other games like Torchlight and stuff like that. I prefer those kind of games with uh, a, a controller in my hand, it's, it, you know. And so I'm, I'm very excited about this because this adapts to my play style. And from some of the screenshots and stuff like that that I've seen, um, I think that we are, uh, you know, are in for a big treat. And um, is Jason back yet, by chance? <laughs> no, unfortunately, he's not back yet. All right, he's getting so. it. That's it. That's it. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> oh, God. Well, let's, we, okay. we want to jump well, in a just... few quick questions about Constance. Did you, did you want to say something else really quick? Um, no, I, unfortunately, you know, uh, we, we just want, we, sorry, sorry, we just give you guys a little update. Um, unfortunately, Jason will not be joining us today. Okay. So, so okay. something has come up, so sorry That's about fine. that. That's but I can fine. answer all the console questions. Yep, okay. Um, so there was a lot of physical changes you guys had to make from using a mouse on the PC version and a keyboard, obviously, to having analog six and a limited number of input buttons. How hard or easy was this, this process for you guys? Like, was there just a ton of iteration to get it just right to see how it is now? Uh, you know, the, the, I would say the, you know, getting it feeling 80% right actually happened uh, rather quickly. And I think big part of that, the, the reason for that is, you know, at its heart, right, at its core, you know, Diablo 3 has a very, not just robust, but a very visceral combat model. I mean, like, you know, we look at skills like Bash, when you look at skills like um, Rapid Fire, they really feel um, um, so great on a, with a mouse and a keyboard. And this translating those skills uh, on, onto a controller, when you add rumble, when you add, add the mm -hmm. fact that you have some sort of directional control with with your left stick, it really makes rapid fire feel feel really great. So, um, I think very quickly, I think within the first you know couple of weeks of actually you know getting console up and running, uh, we made great sort of great progress, and it felt you know skills felt they were they were good. I think what took us um, you know a lot of time though was getting the right feel, and there are two components to that. The first one was you know how do we handle um, you know, targeting assist. How do we handle, you know, making yeah. sure that when the player, you know, presses the button, that they're actually hitting the monster that they want, that they're actually intending to hit. Um, so that just took a lot of sort of very clever tricks, um, <laughs> you know, when it comes to like target priorities and you know how the player, you know, how far the player is pushing on the stick. So just it took a lot of, you know, a lot of iteration and a lot of nudging of some very small numbers back and forth until it felt right. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the other aspects that um, I was actually pretty surprised. Um, was that, you know, on PC, right, your eye is always tracking your cursor, and your cursor is always, like, you know, I would say on the edge of the screen, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily on your character. But once you have direct control, your eye is on your character. So some skills, like Arcane Orb, I found that we were, when we were trying them on console, because I can actually see my character when I press the button, that the, the movement speed of Arcane Orb and, and the way the projector moves across the screen, like, even though it feels really responsive on PC, on console, it felt like it was lagging a little bit, a little bit behind. Mm. So we had to go through a whole sort of pass of, you know, evaluating uh, a lot of the skills to make sure that the minute the player presses a button on on console, that the right um, uh, feedback is is and the right actions happen sure. in, in time. Yeah, so that definitely. was that was an interesting. So since we're talking about differences between the PC and console. Um, We've seen how the interface works for equipping items on the console, and it's totally rewritten from the ground up. Um, are we going to see any of that stuff kind of come over to PC so it's just just even quicker to get through farming runs and stuff like that to yeah. make the game flow a bit better or a bit smoother? I mean, uh, what kind of stuff can we yeah, or, maybe expect to see translate to the PC version as well? That's a good question, uh, and in some ways I'd almost, you know, uh, throw or flip that question back to you guys, and then, you know, when you guys get a chance to play console and uh, you actually get a feel for it, I love to hear uh, which you know which of these sort of console specific features you know our our PC players sure. would be interested in, in in us bringing over. That, I, think I think the, the thing, dodge definitely would be one. Uh, <laughs> that except PC players would love. So so the dodge one, I think that is the probably one of the more trickier ones. Um, and that's mainly because the dodge feels really great when you have analog sticks. And um, I think it would be uh, 
it's a really problematic for us to try to figure out how to get that working uh, with a with a mouse and keyboard. So I think one of the things it, it, to keep in mind is when it comes to like controls, um, we really are going to be making decisions for 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 all our platforms. They really um, sort of sing true and make the game feel awesome for, for those platforms. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we never, never want to get into a position where, um, you know, we just sort of grandfather um, uh, features that make, feel really good in one, uh, one version of the game and into the other. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, but, but more of the UI stuff, I'd be really interested to hear from you guys. Like, you know, what would you like to see? Yeah, and that's that's kind of I think what we were getting. And I'm not getting at, but that's one of the things that really intrigued me was, you know, because you had to redo all of this, and you see the, you know, the um, uh, how you had to set something up because of the the standards that you had. You know, it's like, wow, this works really good. I wish we had done this for the PC. You know, and uh, um, I was just curious that you know if 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 you guys had one of those types of moments or not like oh we should have just done this uh you, you know not necessarily in those terms um okay. i really feel that you know and and you know when i joined um uh, uh, the diablo team i actually spent some time working on 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 some of the uh, sort of pc features helping them to ship uh, the tutorials and some of that some of that stuff and i really feel that the the ui we have for pc works really well for pc and uh you know, I don't necessarily, don't necessarily want us to put it, be in a situation where, where, where we're trying to sort of, sort of retrofit a console UI onto a, uh, onto a PC game. But, you know, things like, uh, I think one of the more popular features we added to console is the item queue. Um, and that, um, to some degree, really changes the way I, I sort of play the game. Like, I don't have to constantly stop and look at my inventory. I can just sort of pick up something. If I, you know, if I see a, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an upgrade, I might stop at that point. So the, those are the kind of decisions that as we sort of move forward, you know, we'll, we might start asking ourselves, does it make sense for us to bring some of these th th things over? Mm. But again, the philosophy has been and will always continue to be is what do we need to make, what decisions do we need to make in order to deliver an awesome PC game and what decisions do we need to make to deliver an awesome console game? Okay. Yeah. Oh, works. go for it. Yeah, that works. Yeah. You guys can jump in. Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is why I wanted to chime in on the um, PC versus console side. So, in the same way that the console is looking to translate some of the skills onto console, um, there are a lot of things that the console did that we definitely found interesting um, for PC. Uh, the two that come to mind are um, they did some iteration on the bosses. I think they looked at the bosses that went out with the PC version of the game and said, hey, you know, Asmodan could really be more interesting than he was. And um, looking at what they've done on the console, um, you know, I have to agree. I say, hey, you know what? Asmodan is better. And, oh, I'm sorry. Am I, am I not loud enough? You're kind of quiet. A little How's bit. That? A little bit on the quiet side. The mic. Oh, okay. Is that better? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we okay. go, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, so I was saying that uh, we were looking at the boss fights on, on console, and they, they did a lot of work to improve. I, I think one of the uh, shots that goes out on the, on the sizzle reels, the Belial fight, where they also um, brought the camera down, which I don't think is something that would be appropriate for the PC version, but I think just the approach of thinking about the boss fights and can they be better than they were would be would be good. And, and so that's something that we're looking at on the PC side. Uh, another example of something that they looked at on console that I think we will probably at least take the philosophy and see what we can do on the PC side is the loot on the ground. Um, console on the first implementation said, you know, I mean, on PC, everyone knows that the ground is littered with white, blue, yellow items. And we often get requests for things like, can I hide all my white items, um, which there's a whole other topic, which we can get into if we want to <laughs> later, but, but, you know, talking about console, they said, well, on PC, you can at least click on the yellow item that you want, but on console, you know, you're, you're, pick, you're, you're pressing a button and relying on your position and the UI to pick up an intelligent item nearby, um, and they really felt, wow, we, we, we absolutely cannot have this many items on the ground. Sure. So they put some work into reducing the number of items that were on the ground, and We've been looking at the results, and on PC, we're saying, you know what? We really don't need this many items on the ground. Yeah. So we're looking at, well, how can we you know, take some of that philosophy? And, and we've said before, but you know, bears repeating, 
I would love for us to just like drop less items but make those items of higher quality or more consistently good. So that's another thing where we're not trying to like directly port either from PC to console or from console to PC, but we are looking to translate or apply some of the philosophies that we think would work well for any particular version of the game. Cool. Very good. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. It just went dead silent and I... Oh. Yeah, I felt my stomach fall out from underneath of me. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, very good, you guys. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I am very excited for the console version. I think it's going to be phenomenal, um, and uh, I, I can't wait. I, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the emails that we got was uh, it was a tweet from uh, community manager Bashiak. You may know that name. Uh, he is having a four-person sleepover the night of the uh, release, <laughs> and he wants to know how much fun he's going to have. That was his question to the developers. The night of the what? Sorry, you broke up there. Man. Oh, the night of the, the uh, release of the game. Right, the night the uh, the council game releases, he is having a four person <laughs> slumber party, and he wants to know if uh, how much fun he's going to have. I told him well, I would I, read his his question on the on the show. So, oh, his question. Uh, so I think the answer is going to be it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's there's just something magical about you know sitting on the same couch with you know three of your friends and uh, and it's just sort of like. You know, mowing down the hordes of hell and 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 you know, picking up some sort of awesome loot. It just like it really harkens back to those you know those days of like you know Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, and it's just it's just such a such a fun type of corporate experience. Where I think in these days with you know with the proliferation of shooters, like there's not a lot of really sort of great console co-op experiences where you know everybody's on the same screen and having. Uh, that sort of shared experiences. You know, a lot of games, unfortunately, now take your awesome 60-inch TV screen and turn it into four smaller TV screens, right? So, right. Um, I think it's just it, and the gameplay of it is is you know so very fast and visceral, and you know I think if there's a, if there are enough libations in the room, I think uh, uh, <laughs> some some Diablo couch actions are going to be a lot of fun. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We will move on from the council thing before the chat room has a complete and total meltdown. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we did get quite a few technical questions from the, uh, from the forums in emails and stuff like that. So um, uh, you know what, Jimmy? I'm going to let you have the floor with some of this. Okay. Um, we've received a lot of responses from the community regarding upcoming class editions, although we won't be, like, trying to prod and get exactly what classes are coming um, is this something we can look forward to in the future? Is it in the development cycle? Is it even a remote possibility? Or are you guys happy with the five classes that are currently in Diablo 3? And this is for anybody everybody, that wants Everybody's to chime looking in. at me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're all looking at you. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't see them. Um, well, without really, you know, giving everything like, everything away, it's, it's, your classes are one of those things that, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, back to the, what I said before about, you know, delivering on that, that um, epic, epic fantasy that is, that is Diablo and, and, um, you know, um, giving players, you know, sort of different windows of, you know, into the world of Sanctuary, I think is something that, I, I think on the development team, we find very exciting. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll, 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 I'll leave that where it is <laughs> and let you guys draw conclusions. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, to follow up with that, um, where where's PvP? It's been a while since you guys have talked about it. We have brawling in the game. People are kind of itching for something a bit more. Something maybe we can roam around uh, through different acts in PvP, just in the open world. I uh, give give us something so we can we can get excited for for some future PvP stuff. Again, everybody's looking at me. Oh man. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that's uh, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I think uh, you know, that's one of the unanswered questions that uh, stepping into the role, um, I feel a lot of uh, sort of weight in the responsibility to, um, you know, at at some point being able to um, you know stand in front of our community and say, okay, this is what 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 our plan is, um, you know, but at, you know, at the at the moment, uh, right now, we don't have, you know, there's there's no announcements. Uh, uh, to be made. The one thing I will tell you guys um, that I get the team. There's usually somebody comes by um, my desk at least three times each week <laughs> asking the same question. So this is a question that that on the team um, 
we feel really strongly about, and I know that you guys are 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 anxious for 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 an answer. So uh, I guess if anything, if I can just you know ask one thing for you guys to keep being being patient, and we will you know when the time's right, and once we once we have something uh, cool to share with you guys, I promise you, you guys will be the first to you know. Absolutely, and you know what I mean. It's it's a fair reminder that it's not like. It's not like, you know, the entire project and everything is completed and sitting on your desk and you just haven't gotten around to doing anything with it yet, you know what I mean? And uh, it's something like this, it takes a lot, uh, a lot of testing and, and, you know, people realize or they, they fail to realize that when you're, when you're launching the council stuff and, and trying to, you know, port an entire game over to a council and you're um, trying to add stuff to the game and fix things and, and put together patches and change content and stuff like that, this is the kind of stuff that, I mean, you can work on, but you've got a list a, a mile long of other things you're trying to get accomplished as well. So I, I, I understand that. I understand. Did somebody else wanted to add something to that? I, I think I may have stepped on a little bit. No, I think, no? I, I mean, I think what you just said is it's, it's absolutely true. And, you know, I think the, you know, to keep mind as well is that the Apple team is not a, it's not a huge 500 person team either. So, you know, we're, we're so very small, um, you know, sort of crack team that, you know, we, we, if we could, we like to, you know, tackle everything at once. But, you know, we do have to make sure we're making, you know, uh, sort of working on the right things at the right time. But you know, as I said before, it's, it's on our mind. And I realized stepping into the role that there's a big, it's a big uh, sort of white elephant in the room. And, um, um, you know, we're not ignoring it. Or I certainly am not ignoring it. Um, I, we're just trying to find the right time to, to tackle that big question. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, um, speaking of big questions, the other giant that we would like to talk about um, is how you're handling itemization. Now, there are some newer or less experienced players out there that may not know what we're talking about when we say itemization. So uh, can someone just briefly explain what it is, why it is kind of considered an issue, and what possible fixes might be in store for us? You want us to explain that? Or, well, actually, I was kind of looking <laughs> at Jimmy, but he can't see oh, okay. me, so yeah, he didn't he know I was looking that. at him. <laughs> Jimmy, are you with us still? Yeah, sorry, oh, sorry about that. Chat okay. was oh, <laughs> distracting yeah. me. Yeah. So, well, Jimmy, what is itemization? How would you explain that? Uh, just how the design of the items are, what what stats are important, and how everything kind of meshes together to to how the game is is played, <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Um, it's it's complex, and I I have a feeling that this itemization patch will will be a step in the right direction, but I, I wish I knew something about it. I, can, is there anything you guys can delve on it? Um, there was the post from Travis um, a few months ago about it. Is there... I, I know we, we a lot of people have talked about the the timeline for it, and it's post-BlizzCon, which is a little disappointing, but it's fine. It's, it's these things take time and you want to do it right. Um, is there anything you can share with us today about the itemization process and, and where it is and just just any information that that, we, that these guys want? <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, the itemization for Diablo, it's, it's pretty integral to the entire experience. While it's weird to hear, like, feedback of myself, super distracting. Um, so, I mean, Diablo is about being awesome, killing lots of guys. How do I... Oh, I didn't mute that? Oh, that's so much better. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was I, listening to myself. I physically the felt the light weird. bulb come on for you. <laughs> Why it pointed at the mute button on uh, on Twitch, which I didn't realize I pushed. <laughs> uh -huh. So, sorry. Um, yeah, to the meat of the issue. Um, items are massively important to our game. Uh, obviously, the, keeping the reward structure feeling good for people, giving them things to chase after or aspire to, um, creating items that are as memorable for D3 as they were in D2. Um, and that's something we talk about a lot. You know, when we talk about what we want to change and what we want to improve with our itemization for Diablo, I sort of talk about things from other games that I think are really good examples, like the things we want people to remember. And I, one of the ones I bring up a lot is, uh, is this is completely cycling for a second, but I talk about like Thunder Fury in, in WoW. Uh -huh. um, it's one of those things that not everyone had, but it was something everyone maybe could attain. Sure. Uh, but the people who had them have stories about you know how they got it, and I was funny. I was telling this story to someone in my office, one of the other designers, and 
chair is like, oh yeah, I remember when I helped Andrew get his Thunder Fury, and Andrew is one of our other system designers. Um, I, we don't feel like the atomization is there yet, um, clearly. Uh, it's something we've talked about before. It's not like we think what we have right now is perfect. We want to make a lot of improvements in that area. Um, it's, it's something that I've been working on for quite some time now and have been pulling in lots of outside resources to help. Um, I've said, I think, on more than one occasion, when I, think of, when I want people to think of legendaries for D3 mm -hmm. in the future, I want them to think like game-changing things, not game-breaking. So we have a lot of meetings trying to come up with these kinds of ideas, and I think I've rattled off lots of them before. Sure. Um, I, I've listed some in the item blog months ago, and I've talked about other ideas, uh, like boots that make you ethereal so you can pass through monsters, or uh, set bonuses that let you have, I don't know, call the ancients up 100% of the time if it wasn't a terrible ability, so that'd be exciting. <laughs> um, I think some, I mean, ones as recent as today that I was working on implementing is... Uh, I think a weapon that when you kill something it opens up a black hole to hell basically that sucks everything in around it so it gives um, more items that can open up gameplay styles for people mm -hmm. so that they have more impact than just making a number on a character sheet big um, like that was one example where we were like yeah that's a cool idea like what would you do with it? I don't know you could be a, maybe you're a mage and you you kill something with a big single target spell, it vacuums it all into one area, and then you drop a meteor on it, and that becomes a place down. That could be cool. Um, so there's a lot of work going into that from all of our designers. Okay. Um, Wyatt touched on some of the points a little while ago about, like, um, funny, actually, a lot of the work that we were trying to do or have been working on over time um, as we were, you know, going through the iterative process of ironing out, like, what are the philosophies for D3's items? How should they work? What should we change? Um, and when we were having all these meetings months ago, like, most of the time, we would be like, here's something we want to change, because this could be better. Here's how we're going to change it. And then Josh or Jason would come to us and be like, we heard you're doing this for the PC. That's really <laughs> awesome. Right. Hey, we're, we should totally... Do you mind if we steal that for console? We're like, yeah, why not? <laughs> so it's funny, actually, because the uh, console has um, a good chunk of the, you know, sort of philosophy changes already incorporated that we're moving forward with, like dropping less items, making the items we drop better, making sure the item pacing feels better. Okay. Um, things of that variety. Good deal. So what, what specifics are, they, are you guys looking for? Like, what do you want to know more than that? Or is that a good answer for you? I think Wyatt wants to chime in, too. Uh, I'll, uh, this is Wyatt here, because um, I know people are saying who's talking. Um, uh, first off, I think uh, Protoss has lots of good error options, just responding to some of the chat that's randomly going by. <laughs> but um, more, more importantly, um, I just wanted to add something about the itemization. Uh, in general, people will say something like, itemization needs improvement, or items are bad. And... Um, when I hear that statement, um, there's sort of three different angles, I think, that we could look at it. Um, obviously, there's, there's more, and there's lots of takes on it, but um, one aspect might be the amount of time it takes to get, get a reward, to okay. get an item reward. Um, for example, you know, I farm for hundreds of hours, and I haven't seen an upgrade yet. Um, I feel that um, on the team, we look at that as being a side effect of the auction house, which we've alluded to and mentioned before, that um, while there have been positive aspects of the auction house, like being able to get an item that you want, um, trying to move um, you know, the ability to trade with other players into you know, an actual formally supported feature, um, the downside has been that it short circuits the reward loop. So when people talk about you know, having to farm for hundreds of hours to get an item, um, that I would really point at the auction house for that one. Um, a second criticism of itemization, when people say itemization needs improvement, would be just this notion of good drops versus bad drops. Um, and by that they mean, well, I don't mind so much how long it takes for me to farm out my next item upgrade, but I'm really offended by some of the items that are on the ground. And that's certainly some, another way to, to look at itemization improvements is, you know, I need a ring with, you know, strength and attack speed and crit and crit damage and instead you gave me a ring which you know has for example um, I don't know um, trying to think of a of an example um, basically like like a combination of stats like strength and int let's say on the sure. same item 
And you look at that, and you're like, not only do I not want that item, but nobody wants that item. And I'm kind of insulted that you even put it in front of me. And uh, I think we're looking at that side of things, too, is we're trying to look at the items and say, let's try to make sure that even if an item isn't good, and it's not good for me, you can at least imagine a world where it was good for somebody, um, so that you're not as offended by the item's existence. Um, and then the third aspect of itemization, which you know Travis was alluding to as well when he was talking, was just the ability of items to do truly unique things that change how you play. Um, mm. And I think that's another area in which we could do better. Um, I, um, for the version of Diablo 3 that we shipped, um, the legendaries were lackluster in retrospect. And a lot of that's because we focused a lot more on our skills and our skill runes. Right. So if you take, for example, I'll just use a simple example, like um, run like the wind on sprint, which leaves tornadoes behind you as you run. Um, in another game, uh, that might have actually been a legendary item that said, hey, barbarians, if you're wearing this legendary item, when you sprint, you're going to leave tornadoes behind you as you run. Uh, on our development team, the rune system was new, and we, we really wanted to make sure that the rune system um, you know, was appealing and, and exciting to use. So all of those ideas for skills got put on runes instead, and those rune designs sort of, you know, consumed all of our ideas for ways to modify skills, which, you know, um, I think in retrospect, we really want to have a mix. You know, you want to have skill runes that are exciting and interesting and can change skills, but you want legendaries that maybe take it farther or do other things or allow combinations of runes to interact in ways that didn't before. So going forward, we really want to kind of like split that creative pool, that design space uh, between both runes and legendary items. Okay. Very cool. And you know, it's actually, it's really funny that, that you brought that up, especially the runes, um, because this is one of the things that, that, that landed in my inbox um, that I thought was pretty neat. It, it hit me as interesting. And I don't know um, if you guys are you know, up for a little bit of on the fly brainstorming. Um, but Daniel V uh, wrote in, and I'm actually going to read his email. Uh, Dear Twizcast crew, I've always liked the idea of skill runes since their announcement and have followed their development like the rest of Diablo 3's news. I was especially interested in some of the demonstration videos of skill runes as they showed some pretty cool stuff, such as the seven split magic missile. Do you have any plans to add additional skill runes to the game? Or could these be new potential items to find? Something unaffected by magic and out in the world for a lucky player to get a hold of? I think um, when we talk a lot about like the kind of ideas we want for legendaries, um, and, and Wyatt actually just talked about this a little bit, but um, runes is actually kind of the area that these feel like they would have... Runes feel like, to me, they, they would have been better served as items instead of having runes on your character sheet. You would have had all these items that meaningfully change your gameplay. Now, runes are awesome, um, and I'm super happy they exist. Uh, we, I don't think we necessarily would have plans to add more runes, but I think that is definitely the area that we are pursuing with, um, with items. Not that item unlocks a rune or anything like that, just if we have ideas that are like, oh, this you know, makes your sprint... Uh, actually, I can't think of a sprint rune. That wouldn't be a false cut my head. <laughs> but um, if, if, you, if you have it's something to do to sprint, yeah. um, that it lasts 10 seconds, I don't know. Um, like That could be a pair of boots or a pair of legs or something like that. Or um, magic missile splits you know, four more times or bounces off walls. Like Those are the kinds of things now that we're looking at, sort of like trying to make items um, to do those as well. Uh -huh. um, now, it's not necessarily limiting them to skills or anything like that uh, specifically it's just the the low hanging fruit i guess in sure. design terms of like what can we do with items well we can definitely make skills cooler or even more over the top um and i think like i've given a lot of examples like a pair of boots where when you use leap on your barbarian it leaves an earthquake because you shatter the ground when you land stuff like that hmm okay yeah, and you know that's the one thing I gotta say is is and, and I mean kind of backing up off of um, off of what you talked about and everything. Um, that was one of the, the rune system itself. I'm and I'm really glad that that you are so happy with with it because when I came back to Diablo, uh, that's one of the things that I noticed every time that I I um, you know increased the level, 
I was rewarded and it kept me playing because I would look at, I, you know, I looked at, at the, uh, the ability that I got and then I got my first rune. And then I, of course, went and looked at all the rest of the runes and it's like this ability just keeps getting cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler. And a lot of these other games have um, gone, to the, gone to the wayside of you don't get rewarded as often. And so it really felt good. And so for you to, he, you know, to, for me to hear what you had to say about that kind of thing, um, you know, and the ideas that you could possibly come up with uh, as far as adding runes or, or, or you know, uh, adding items that could influence that, um, you know, I think that's, I think it's, it's great. That was just one of the emails that I read and I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. I've, I definitely want to bring that up to these guys. So, um, Jimmy. Yeah, or, I I'm can, sorry, I, DJ I have Tyrant. a couple more questions. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that players are really, really hungry for is more content. You guys added the Paragon system. You guys added, um, oh my gosh, Infernal Machines. Couldn't think of the name off the top of my head. <laughs> but um, I, is there is, are we going to get anything else before, in the, in, obviously an expansion is coming, but you can't talk about that right now. But are we going to get maybe a ladder system similar to Diablo 2 where there will be seasons where we get reset and we can create new characters with a totally fresh new economy. Um, I know you guys have talked about this in other um, venues, other interviews and stuff, but uh, is there any any more you can elaborate on that? Who wants that? <laughs> um, Who wants the time bomb? The time bomb. Well, uh, I guess I'll jump on that one. Um, you, know, you know, right now, you know, as as you may have gathered, we're, we're you know we're talking a lot about a lot, a lot of really interesting things. I know ladders is something that that does come up um, to here and there, and you know we're really you know we're we're really starting to shift in in uh, you know our thinking to really focus on on what the future really looks like. You know, both like really long term, but also you know in the in the more shorter and immediate term. So. Um, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, as in in typical Blizzard fashion, you guys might just have to wait a little bit longer to, to get some of this cool stuff. But then I promise it's going to be pretty awesome when it comes out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Should we tune into BlizzCon? I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I think BlizzCon is going to be very awesome this year. So good. Uh, I, I, good. Especially if you like Diablo. Now you see. Now okay. Now there you go, people. There's that's there. There's I would consider that an answer of sorts. Am I right or am I am I smoking crack here? I think that's no, I, that's a good answer. I'm excited for Diablo for for BlizzCon, and obviously these guys have something up their sleeves. I'm sorry you have to wait like I don't know three three months or whatever to hear it, but um, that's cool. Um, the last uh, you know what the and and uh, this this is um, we're actually kind of getting to that point there. Uh, the last thing that I'd like to do before we jet out of here, guys, is uh, it gives some some of the community's words of praise to you. Um, you know, you're constantly surrounded. I mean, for the love of God, take a look at the chat room. Um, you're constantly surrounded by people who are, you know, demanding that you fix what they deem as a broken game at points. Uh, but I wanted to take the emails and the forum posts that I read that people talked about all the things that you guys did right. So um, a couple of my listeners and, uh, and, and uh, uh, friends and, and emailers wrote in. They said, uh, like, for example, Blue, he wrote in and he says, I love the ability to dye armor. It makes, uh, it, makes it so pieces that don't normally go together mesh. It also gives you more, a more unique look. Uh, you know I prefer Blue. Uh -huh, his name is Blue. Um, I love how the skill system feels. I, fe uh, I like being able to pick and choose how skills and runes fit and work for me. It truly is a deep game that I have not fully taken advantage of. So there's a little pat on the back for you guys. Um, the other thing that I got was the old red uh, wrote in and said, I've been grinding for over a year, playing almost daily and having a great time. I read a lot of posts regarding how bad the game is, but in, in game with friends who I met in other public games, uh, we play together often, and I don't hear any complaints. I'm not sure what you personally expected, but I put over 900 hours into this game, and I enjoyed uh, almost every patch update. For 60 bucks, I can honestly say it's money well spent. So, um, you know, every once in a while, it doesn't hurt to bring out the positive. You know what I mean? It, 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 I, I get the feeling that people are always looking to you guys for, give me answers, give me answers to this, give me answers to that, and sometimes the answers just aren't ready. Um, but, uh, and so it turns into negativity sometimes, but, uh, it sounds to me like there's a lot of things that are going right. Um, <laughs> all uh, right. Well, wait. sorry. Like Shoot. I was just uh, explaining to everybody in the chat room. I appreciate your patience guys. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, Twitch was like, you know what? I'm not going to stream you anymore. I don't get it. Whatever. So <laughs> it wouldn't be Twizzcast without something like this. So anyways, moving right along. Um, I guess, Twizz, can you hear me? okay. 
Yeah, I can hear you just fine. I can hear you just yeah, fine. Yeah. Um. So it, yeah, it's nice to hear the the positive feedback about the game. Um. I think that you were just kind of getting to um how we feel about some of the things that went well, and I think there was a comment that someone made uh a couple months after the game came out that although there's a lot of things that could be improved, it's sort of a good foundation to work on, and um, I do think that the the, although you know there's lots of room for improvement on itemization and certainly there's room for improvement on skills, like the actual skill system structure where I have skills and I can choose a rune and I have six skills in my bar and I can kind of customize those, um, I still really like that. So although we have plans to um, improve the skills further, um, that's more in terms of, of the actual individual skills. I think the system of how they all fit together um, has a lot of potential. It's still there. Yep, yep. Um, and, uh, you know, every patch that we do, um, we see new builds open up. So although um, there was a lot of people experimenting when the game first came out, and then, you know, the collective wisdom of the Internet quickly settled on a, a handful of builds that were most effective, and then over time we've done buffs like to Firebats, for example, mm -hmm. and we see some people experiment with the new skills, but some people say, eh, no, it's not really for me, I prefer the old one, and that's really where I think we want to be, is at a place where different players choose different skill builds because it appeals to their particular style or how they want to play, um, or maybe they got a sweet legendary that really supports oh, that right, right. skill build, and let, I think let me uh, as we move forward, we'll Sorry. be able to do more of that. Let me interject really quick. I, I joined a little later, but have you um, have you guys talked about Demon Hunters at all? I know a lot of people are, are very vocal about Demon Hunters and kind of their state right now. Um, can, you, can you talk to that at all? Yeah, I think that the Demon Hunter can feel very um, binary at times. Sometimes you're, you're doing great, like if you're doing some speed MP0 Inferno clears, and other times it can feel like... Um, you're up against a brick wall. I think that's one issue. Um, I think also um, there's over-reliance on shadow power right now. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, which I, I don't know if we have time to get into that, but um, I guess I want to acknowledge for the people who know the reasons um, that, that there is an over-reliance on shadow power, um, which also adds to it feeling kind of binary. You know, like everything's fine, everything is fine, and then all of a sudden you're dead. <laughs> and that's not great either. Sure, sure. Sure. Um, I think that the uh, damage ratios that you get between generating hatred and spending hatred are off. Okay. Um, that's something that we are actually examining um, actively right now and um, plan on correcting. Um, no promises on the date. It may be a while, but mm -hmm. certainly I just want to acknowledge again that, for example, Hungering Arrow against a single target does... I think better, it depends on your gear, but it's comparable or better damage than Impale. And that doesn't really make sense. You know, Impale is this like heavy single target hatred spender, whereas Hungering Arrow is a generator um, that has a lot more utility in terms of being able to pierce or multiple things or shoot mm -hmm. on the screen. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense that Hungering Arrow does so much more. And I think a lot of that's really due to the fact that Impale needs to do a lot more to make it worth using. Um, and just kind of across the board, the, the benefit you get on quite a few skills for spending hatred um, isn't worth it. Mm. Okay. What do, you, what do you think, Jimmy? Did that, did that, uh, did that quench your, th your thirst for, uh, for knowledge? Yeah. I, I know people are just waiting. <laughs> yeah. I so, get it. I get just it. patience, everyone. It's true. Absolutely. So, uh, well, you know what, everybody? Uh, actually, you know, it, all this kind of happened uh, just just short. Uh, that's actually going to bring this episode uh, of TwizCast to a close, but I would like to give the floor back to the game director uh, for any final words or thoughts that he'd like to give to his players and my listeners about uh, what might be coming in the Diablo world. Josh, sir, the floor is yours. Well, awesome. Again, well, first, thank you for, for, for having us, and, and I hope we really get to do this um, this or more often. I think it's, it's really important that you know we have this you know uh, great lines of communication and that we you know, we're hearing from you guys as, as, as often as possible. And, you know, in, in, in a medium that is more, uh, you know, uh, is a constructive than just sort of uh, more, more two-way rather than just, you know, checking out forums and doing, doing that kind sure. of stuff. But you know, just to tell you guys as a, as a you know, long-time um, Diablo fan, and, you know, I still, like, 
to this day, one of my favorite moments in gaming was the very beginning of Diablo 1, where you see the, you know, that, that, that you know, back then was pretty awesome. Now it's probably a little bit dated, but that the cinematic with, like, the, the crow, and just that sort of gothic feel of Diablo, and then just, you know, spending, um, you know, hours just, you know, you know, going through the, the cathedrals and trying to find mm -hmm. sort of more loot and just realizing that, I, you know, this, what made this game feel so special was not just the awesome characters and the skills I had on the monsters, but the fact that it felt like a game that I could keep coming back to over and over again. So as, as we're sitting here, um, you know, where we are now, sort of a year after D3, I am really uh, looking forward to the future. Um, you know, I think that, you know, D3, you know, had, you know, has, has you know, I've, a few wrinkles in it, but you know, at its foundation, it's a really strong game, and I think um, the combat system and how visceral it feels. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's going to give it sort of, you know, legs. Um, you know, the game plus has a lot of legs to go into the future, and what we're working on on a day-to-day -day basis is, you know, really trying to figure out how we can how we can take uh, how can we you know really add. Uh, you know, give you guys more options in terms of how, how do you guys want to play the game, you know, give you guys more goals, um, you know, really look at, at really delivering on that promise that is, that is Diablo. So, you know, realize that, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the, the, the new guy on, on the director's seat, but, you know, I, before this, uh, you know, and, uh, I, I came to Blizzard because I love Diablo. And I really took on the challenge to see how, do, how can I faithfully translate this awesome game um, from the PC to the console. And I think uh, our mandate now is, you know, how do we take it into the future? And, and I say we because it's, it's not just us working on the game. It's, you know, us as a community of, of, of game designers, developers, and, and players. So I look forward to chatting with you guys more in the, like in the future. And, you know, when it, when it comes time to revealing some of these, these plans in the future, I'm, I'm, I, I hope you guys are going to be as, as excited about them as, as we are here. Certainly. Today, so. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, Josh Wyatt, Travis, uh, and DJ Tyrant, uh, a.k.a. Jimmy, um, thank you all so much for coming on to uh, my show, and uh, we look forward to having you guys back uh, as soon as you'd like. Thanks for having awesome. us. Yeah, thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Uh, well, from the uh, crew here at TwizCast, we encourage you to game safe, love one another, and please, everyone with the sound of my voice, take care. Hey guys, you've been listening to TwizCast, the official podcast of BlizzPro.com. You can follow us all on Twitter at TwizCast, at TwizTE, at TankThatReb, and at Willy underscore Foss. The show notes and articles that we discuss can be found at BlizzPro.com. And if you'd like to drop us a line, send the email to podcast at BlizzPro.com. Thanks again, and we will catch you next week.